Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, let's start. Um, so um, <clears throat> uh, I just want to give some uh, brief background, you know, on our work. So you know, now more and more applications uh, they are beginning to require the very high compute compute performance in order to deliver new and cool features to end users. And uh, the render script, uh, it's a great uh, high level language which allows the programmers to develop high performance kernels uh, that you can leverage the power from both CPU and GPU. Um, so in this talk, I want to you know, use the chance to describe you know, our uh, technical work involved in the implementation of you know, our high performance image and the video processing engines uh, based on run script and uh, take the advantage of both the CPU and the GPU. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I will give more details you know, uh, with the time. So uh, here is the uh, agenda for this topic. Uh, I will first uh, very quickly you know, uh, give a brief on the Mali T6 uh, 604 GPU and uh, run script. Then I will focus on the, our detailed work, you know, about the run script accelerated uh, image and video processing. Also, I want to share, you know, some of the, our optimizations we have done uh, for this work. This might be benefit, you know, other potential developers as well. I think. That's it. Uh, <clears throat> so. Uh, as you might know, so Mali T604 GPU is the first GPU you know, based on the MiGuard architecture. So you know, it allows you scale you know, from one to four cars uh, GPU power. And it supports the atomic and also the true IEEE double precision floating point uh, mathematics. Of course, it also supports OpenCL, which is very important to, for the GPU compute. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> the Mali GPU has uh, uh, shipped actually with the production you know, quality software, and uh, it has the <coughs> sorry about that uh, the built-in multi-core uh, scheduling and performance scaling you know within the graphics system. So this actually has freed the application developer to consider these. Um, so. Uh, Run the script uh, is like uh, you can write a high performance computation task uh, at the native level, uh, like the, you write a C language. And uh, it does give the applications the uh, ability you know, to run the operations with uh, automatic parallelization across all available processing cores. Um, I think. Uh, uh, Key advantage is it supporting different type of uh, processor. I mean, both the architecture and the number of cores. So you don't need to actually recompile your code uh, for different uh, styles, uh, processors. Um, that's, um, okay. Uh, so here, actually, I want to <coughs> just highlight, you know, some of the experience you know we have learned uh, during our work. So in case actually you follow you know, uh, these rules, uh, you will make sure you have your run script kernels running on the Mali GPU. Uh, and also, I mean, using the run script on GPU, you can take advantage, you know, you can run two uh, different or uh, same kernels on CPU and the GPU at the same time. So without actually influencing each other. So you can take the full advantage of your available uh, compute power. And uh, through our practice, we are seeing uh, you know, up to 20x speed up, and uh, maybe in average like 4x speed up on the Mali T604 GPU uh, compared to the CPU. Uh, so now I want to talk about you know, uh, multiple wires uh, work about you know, the using the run script to accelerate the image and the video processing. So we have developed uh, two APKs. Uh, one is called Advanced Photo Editing. Uh, we have demoed that <coughs> uh, during CES 2013. Then we also developed a video transcode APK, uh, which had been shown uh, in MWC 2013. 
And uh, here is just some uh, a quick point you know, about why we want to use runtime script. So first, actually, is uh, you know the modern uh, mobile device has uh, you know much more pixels than before. So the video and the image sizes are becoming bigger and bigger. And also, if you want to do some advanced image and video processing, the algorithms usually need a much more compute power you know, than before. For example, you know, the DJIC and the deep learning stuff we have been, done, uh, been doing. And also, the run script you know, supports the vector uh, operations, so suitable, suitable you know, for the RGBA compute type of things. Uh, at last, you know, run script is easy to use in the Java layer. Uh, so I, I don't want to go through you know these lists one by one, but uh, below are the filters you know we have implemented so far for the photo editing APK. You know something like the motion blur, uh, uh, sobo, I mean warp hinge, uh, a lot of different filters. Um, okay, and uh, within these APKs, actually, uh, we have support actually different modes. Uh, uh, you know, to give the end user experience. So one mode actually is called batch mode. So I mean, uh, if you I mean take uh, if you try our demo right outside this uh, this conference uh, hall, uh, you can see actually the demo. So you, if you go to the batch mode, then you can uh, compare you know the performance between running these filters on CPU and GPU. Uh, in this mode, you can select you know, single or multiple pictures, single or multiple filters. You can choose the device you know, to, uh, to try, you know, CPU, GPU, or both. Uh, so um, here is uh, the benchmark result uh, you know, for a few selected filters. So from here, you can see uh, for the bicubic you know, scaling filters, you can see up to uh, there's about actually 15x um, for this filter. And uh, another f two filters like uh, wave uh, tile reflection, they are more than 7x. Uh, so we are really seeing you know, the great performance uh, speed up you know, by exporting, uh, using the GPU. Uh, besides the batch mode, we of course also support you know, the photo editing mode. Uh, more than that, uh, we have one mode called uh, live cam camera support. So which means actually you can do uh, the filter processing you know, on the live video from the device camera in real time. And you can clearly see the performance, uh, big performance difference between CPU and GPU. Uh, this is certainly not possible you know, without the, the power of the GPU compute. And uh, uh, here is you know, just a quick uh, screenshot for the image editing. Uh, I want to use a bit more time actually you know, to talk about the video processing. Uh, the reason actually is the video processing is much more challenging than the, you know, the single image processing. And uh, especially actually you want to do some real time video uh, transcode kind of things. Uh, the key of doing that actually is how do you construct a very efficient uh, pipeline. So the first point I want to bring out here is you know the Android itself you know doesn't really supply you know a good API, APIs for the user to construct you know the such a pipeline. So uh, so one way you know uh, work on this uh, APK, we use the OpenMax framework to implement our video pipeline. Uh, implement you know in native code with C++. So uh, a brief uh, you know info actually for the OpenMax framework is it has a basic element uh, which is called a component. It's just something similar to the directional filter. I think uh, a lot of guys um, should be familiar with that. So each component, they can run on its own thread in parallel. So by implementing uh, some filters on CPU, well, leave others on GPU, so we can certainly using, uh, use the CPU and GPU together to achieve the maximum throughput of your, from your system. <coughs> and uh, here I want to give some <coughs> pipeline details. 
So uh, with this pipeline, of course, uh, to offload you know, the CPU and the GPU, we want to use uh, both the hardware decoder and the encoder. And uh, we have uh, implement you know, the color space conversion you know, from the YUV format to the RGBA format. Uh, this is also uh, as a component. Um, also, for some very complicated filters, it would be good to split that into multiple phases. So you can decide, you know, uh, so you can put actually every phase into an independent component and allow them to run in parallel. And uh, here is an uh, example, you know, uh, pipeline diagram. So here, actually, you can see, you know, how we construct actually this uh, video transport pipeline. Uh, uh, this is showing actually, you know, uh, we operate the files. I mean, as input and also output, the, you know, video files in different format. So we first actually, you know, uh, call the hardware encoder in a separate component. Then you can we can apply you know other filters either in CPU or GPU uh, to the pipeline. Then at the end we do the encode, we call the encoder uh, to take advantage of the hardware as well. Okay, and uh, here you know uh, are some uh, performance numbers we have seen. So um, here I only listed actually two filters. One is called the shake. So it's basically doing the motion uh, <coughs> uh, stabilization uh, for input video. So we are seeing, you know, um, we can almost doing actually uh, in real time for the, the D shake. And uh, we, we are seeing like a 3.5x, you know, compared to the CPU. Uh, this is actually, you know, based on some of our old work. So we can also do the real time, you know, processing for 1080p, you know, for the D shake. And for the upscaling, uh, we are seeing an even bigger X factor, you know, almost like 6.7x. <coughs> uh, I want to highlight here, I will also mention this. So because the D-Shake algorithm is really complicated, so we do some optimization here to take, uh, take the advantage of both CPU and GPU. Um, here, just an example image, this is not video. Um, so we just want to show you know, the, how the interface looks like. If you want to feel, you know, go ahead to try our demo. Um, uh, this is upscaling. <coughs> uh, I want to use a bit more time actually to talk about you know, the optimizations we have done uh, for our work. So I believe you know, um, this uh, experience might be helpful you know, for other developers as well. So for the image processing, uh, usually, you know, first we have to optimize, you know, the, the algorithm itself to make sure, you know, they are more suitable to run on GPU. Uh, I think this is a general um, stuff everyone will try, right? Uh, for example, right, uh, we, we will uh, use a vector to process, you know, uh, one pixels RGBA channel together, or maybe we combine several pixels together and process all at once. Uh, if possible, right, you try to use you know, shape logical <coughs> operations you know, to avoid you know, divide and other complicated calcul calculations. Um, for the video transcode, uh, there are some you know, additional uh, complications here, so like the bitmap loading stuff. So, in our optimization, uh, we also uh, put the bitmap loading stuff into a separate uh, background thread <coughs> to you know, hide the latency and time. Uh, and also, it's worth mentioning, you know, for the live camera mode, uh, we implement you know, the YOV to RGBA color space conversion you know, with the CPU using Neon, also as a, you know, a separate uh, pipeline component. Uh, to allow parallel execution. And uh, for the video, uh, uh, for the video processing, uh, the first thing actually, we have to optimize the algorithm as well. So just like you know, other uh, image processing algorithms. So I would say you know, a lot of uh, performance improvement might from the algorithm optimization itself, right? I think that's true for a lot of uh, work, uh, a lot of, you know, projects as well. 
Then the second thing, and the more important I think, is uh, we adopt a pipeline. I think this is the key for any you know, video processing or transcode pipeline. Uh, if uh, somebody wants to do the similar thing, they might have to try more or less the similar idea. And uh, uh, we also, you know, for the district itself, uh, we split the district algorithm into two phases. Uh, so one phase, you know, we compute the frame transformation. So this is implemented, you know, on the CPU with the neon code. Then we do the frame transform according to the uh, transformation estimate from the first phase. So we implement this part on the GPU with a render script. You know, by putting these two, you know, uh, in different <coughs> pipeline stages, or we call it components, so we allow, uh, we use both the CPU and GPU power, you know, to get the best performance. Um, also, you know, I want to share some uh, general optimization hints, uh, so if anybody, you know, is interested in this area. So, uh, try to use, you know, intrin uh, intrinsic run the script function if possible, you know, like the collab mod kind of things. It's very efficient. Uh, try to minimize the branch code. Uh, if you have some common calculation, you know, for all the run script threads, you, can, you should try to, you know, do that outside the kernels. Then pass that in, pass the result in, you know, as a kernel parameters. Uh, you know, although the GPU has a lot of power, but still, you know, the integer is faster, right? So we try to use more integer operations if possible, so. Okay, uh, so I want to give some uh, quick summary here. Um, you know, first is, so right now, I think the more uh, mobile CPU and GPU are suddenly becoming more and more powerful. So this has suddenly enabled the possibility of implementing real-time compute intensive uh, applications. I borrowed the word, uh, I think, uh, from Doug, the practical applications. You know, like the advanced uh, image and video processing as we have been doing on mobile device. So we have actually make it uh, work as an example. The second point I want to raise here is the best performance always comes out efficient task allocations and the scheduling on a heterogeneous uh, platform. You know, the tasks must be allocated to CPU and the GPU based on their types. Uh, the third thing is I want to point, point out is, you know, we can certainly expect to see more and more mobile applications to follow the trend. And uh, I think this practice would also help shape uh, proper two, uh, two chains to ease the software <coughs> development effort while getting much better performance. So uh, I think that's it. And uh, uh, I might have a bit more time, so I just want you know, to use uh, briefly to talk about you know, uh, uh, my company. So our company is called Multicoreware. So uh, we are a leading company actually focusing on the heterogeneous computing. So we have more than 200 years focusing on uh, the heterogeneous computing stuff. And uh, we have you know, a lot of global customers like ARM, AMD, uh, Telestream. So for example, uh, the Telestream has used our technology right, to enable the HD broadcast for the uh, Olympic uh, London last year, I think. And also our company you know, is uh, active members for both uh, Kronos and HIC Foundation. So our CTO Wen Mei Hu uh, is a uh, world uh, famous, I think, expert on the parallel computing and the compiler technology. He's the chair of the tools wo working group of HIC Foundation. And uh, so uh, we provide you know, different kinds of you know, business, like uh, optimization services, uh, to take advantage, you know, different multi-core architecture. And, uh, you know, we have expertise on the compiler technology and the tools. Uh, we have our own accelerated libraries, uh, libraries uh, and so on. So, I mean, if you are interested, I mean, go ahead to try our website, uh, multicorewareinc.com. And uh, here's my email address. Uh, I, I think that's it. <laughs>
I might be a little bit rushed. Sorry for that. But yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.